this is my second attempt now at video, and I think I'm just getting the hang of it. It's also um, dedicated to the memory of Andrei Tarkovsky, who died in December 86. And for me, Tarkovsky is like Balfus, who is the only living painter who's really inspired me. And I would put Tarkovsky in the same category as Balfour's. And in this book by um, John Le Murray about Balfour's, he says, Some artists are providentially singled out as bearers of the golden bell. They abide pilgrims of eternity, keepers of the spirit, servants of beauty, traversing their time and all its transitory flux and reflux, set on a steady course intent on timeless values. And that for me also sums up my feelings about Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky is also a bearer of the golden bell like Balfour's. But he used cinematography instead of painting to convey this message. And he felt so intensely that this world has all its values wrong and its hell bent on suicide, as also Kurt Vonnegut once um, remarked. And I agree with him. This is a crazy world. And Tarkovsky knew that. And I think actually Tarkovsky died not just of cancer, but of a broken heart. Because um, when he got out of Russia to um, make some films in Europe, because he wasn't doing so well in Russia, they didn't really understand him. The authorities did, but the public understood Tarkovsky, or some of them. He had a following there. But, um, the authorities didn't understand his work at all because the Communist Party in Russia is not much different from here. I mean, Tarkovsky isn't really understood in the West either, except by a few fervent followers like myself. Anyway, Tarkovsky felt intensely the need for poetry and the religiousness, which is almost entirely lacking in modern society. All of his films are about his great love of the natural world and his fervent desire for the survival of poetry. And, sorry, it's, it's, um, I hate reading from notes. The survival of poetry. In a hopelessly materialistic society, he knew that an artist is close to insanity because of his need to express this often hopeless desire to reveal his vision of the world. Because the majority of people are content to live a totally short-sighted and selfishly narrow existence, and their material needs are their only real priority. I would like to read on um, some extracts from Tarkovsky's book, Sculpting in Time, Reflections on the Cinema, which he managed to write before he died. Of a broken heart, they did actually let his son out of Russia so he could see him, but he was unfortunately already dying. And they only had um, about a year, I think, together. After several years of separation, his film Nostalgia is um, to do with this terrible separation from his relations in um, Russia. So his wife was managed to uh, stay in Europe with him. Anyway, it's near here. I think I'll try and find some of the marvellous things in this book. Masterpieces are born of the artist's struggle to express his ethical ideals. 
Indeed, his concepts and his sensibilities are informed by those ideals. If he loves life, has an overwhelming need to know it, change it, try to make it better, in short, if he aims to cooperate in enhancing the value of life, then there is no danger in the fact that the picture of reality will have passed through a filter of his subjective concepts through his states of mind, for his work will always be a spiritual endeavour which aspires to make man more perfect, an image of the world that captivates us by its harmony of feeling and thought, its nobility and restraint. I find this book rather overwhelming <laughs> because um, it's so close to my heart I can hardly bear to read it. The beauty is hidden from the eyes of those who are not searching for the truth, for whom it is contraindicated. But the profound lack of spirituality of those people who see art and condemn it the fact that they are neither willing nor ready to consider the meaning and aim of their existence in any higher sense is often masked by the vulgarly simplistic cry, I don't like it, it's boring. It is not a point that one can argue, but it is like the utterance of a man born blind who is being told about a rainbow. He simply remains deaf to the pain undergone by the artist in order to share with others the truth he has reached. An artist who has no faith is like a painter who was born blind. It is a mistake to talk about the artist looking for his subject. In fact, the subject grows within him like a fruit and begins to demand expression. It's like childbirth. The poet has nothing to be proud of. He is not master of the situation, but a servant. Creative work is his only possible form of existence, and his every work is like a deed he has no power to annul. For him to be aware that a sequence of such deeds is due and right, that it lies in the very nature of things, he has to have faith in the idea, for only faith interlocks the system of images for which we system of life. True artistic inspiration is always a torment for the artist, almost to the point of endangering his life. Its realisation is a tantamount to a physical feat. That is the way it always has been. Despite the popular misconception that pretty well all we do is tell stories that are as old as the world, appearing in front of the public like old grannies with scarves on our heads, and our knitting in our hands to tell them all sorts of tales in order to keep them amused. The tale may be entertaining or enthralling, but will do only one thing for the audience, help them pass the time in idle chatter. The artist has no right to an idea to which he is not socially committed, or the realisation of which could involve a dichotomy between in his pro professional activity and the rest of his life. In our personal lives we perform actions as honourable or dishonourable people. We accept that an honourable action may bring pressure down on us or even bring us into conflict with our mood. Why are we not prepared for the trouble that can ensue from our professional activities? Why are we afraid of being called to task when we embark on a film? Why do we start by taking out an insurance so that the picture will be as innocuous as it is meaningless? 
Is it not because we want to receive instant remuneration for our work in the form of cash and comfort? One can only be staggered by the hubris of modern artists if we compare them, say, to the humble builders of sharp cathedral whose names are not even known. The artists ought to be distinguished by selfless devotion to duty, but we forgot about that a long time ago. This makes me think that the um, mentality of Tarkovsky or the psychology is so different really from um, the English and American makeup. Uh, and I feel, I've always felt like a foreigner in England actually. And I don't know why I carry on living here actually. Tarkovsky came here and apparently made an opera at the Opera House and didn't do very well. And never liked it here either, I don't think. And he lived in Paris, I think, which is pretty sensible. <laughs> Nor Italy, which is where I'd like to be. Anyway, that is some of the marvellous things in this book. And he also liked Piero della Francesca, who is another great love that I have, and painter that I love. 